Let us uh, call our meeting on February 25th, 2014 of the Acton School Committee and the Warrant and Finance Committee, um, a budget workshop meeting to order. Um, one little addition to the agenda before we start is that the superintendent has asked to have a short executive session uh, of the board following this meeting regarding a personnel issue. So we welcome everybody here, and uh, everybody has copies of what they need for uh, for getting the budget materials together. And uh, we'll start out by getting some answers to questions that were raised at our um, February 11th budget meeting. <coughs> Since I was not here for that meeting, um, we talked this morning in our administrative council meeting. Uh, both Kim and, my, Kim and Andy and myself about being prepared for tonight. And we are going to uh, give you an update of where we are so far in the process. But before I say uh, what, uh, what we feel we how far along we are in the process or what was accomplished uh, two weeks ago, were there some lingering questions, as it says here, that maybe you thought about in the, that, are, that were uh, about the materials we received two weeks ago? Remember, there, those materials and those budgets that we presented are still in process, and they're going to be impacted a little bit like other budgets are going to be. But I just wanted to make sure that we didn't stifle any positive or, or any kind of communication that people had some lingering ideas about something they saw two weeks ago. Well, there were going to be some updates to, say, the uh, supporting materials, correct? Mm -hmm. the, some of the descriptions, maybe having more detail put in. Right. Um, I assume that that's stuff that we're going to potentially go over at the end of the process. When we mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's our plan. Um, and, and I guess some of the numbers were definitely going to be changing, at least several of them. Mm -hmm. I, I can comment on that in a second, but I wanted to have you uh, voice any of the concerns you have. But I don't think there are uh, concerns per se, at least not to my knowledge. I'm just concerned about the library spot. Uh, yes. Okay, we're going to speak to that a very tiny bit tonight in this presentation that I'm just going to give you, but but that the most of this discussion of that will be in three, two weeks from now when we have the Article Two regular education discussion. So if you, if you don't mind, I'll read from my prepared notes here. Um, tonight's the second night of the budget reviews, and we'll continue to use the same format as done on February 11th. To bring us all up to date since the 11th, there are two unresolved or nearly resolved items from the last meeting, as this is the information given to me by my committee because I wasn't here. Um, <clears throat> the first unresolved item is Article 5, other instruction budget will be modified a little by whatever was decided today at the final stipend meeting. It was a stipend meeting attended by board members and an outside citizen and administrators from 3 to 4 today. And so that process, I believe, is finalized? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Kim will pen those little changes to the Article 5 other instruction budget now that we have that information. But there wasn't time to really do it. Okay, um, so that will be forthcoming? Yes. In yeah. two weeks. Right, right. Two weeks. Okay. And secondly, the library coverage aspects of the Article 6 student staff support budget will be finalized in two weeks as we then visit the Article 2 regular instruction budget due to how the coverage dovetails between the two budgets. It's kind of difficult to pull them out of one and put them in the other without showing what the impacts are uh, financially. Um, also available for review tonight as requested by Paul uh, by the Warrant and Finance Committee is the final tally of the expenditures from the 2012-2013 school year that ended on 6-30-12. But I would caution everyone to not try to make direct correlations with what was actually spent two years ago versus what we're requesting to spend in 2014-15, particularly since we're barely halfway through this year's expenditures, the expenditures for the 13-14 budget. And we will say administratively that we certainly looked at the 12-13 expenditures when developing the new budget. But we also paid more attention to how the 
expenditures are <coughs> ratcheting this year, and but also what the new contracts that are in place and the possible new staffing scenarios we're talking about, how they will impact the budget, so we're considering them. Um, and so, with no further ado, I'd like to introduce Kim to deliver the numbers and the overviews that created the budgets for Articles 7, 9, 10, and 12. And Andy and I, Andy Brazier and I, will be available to contribute any explanations that come from our direct involvement in several of these articles. So I would be happy to turn it over to you. Um, we can start with Article 7. That's the system administration, so that covers the superintendent, um, the business office, or the central office, um, the stipends for the secretary who's here during our <coughs> committee meetings, and the, um, the stipends for this board. Basically, right down through, um, the board stipend is, that'll be part of our, when I give you the complete stipend breakdown, you'll see, I'll break it down by articles, and you'll see that this is a stipend for, um, on that sheet. The group insurance covers myself and the payroll account clerk. The purchase professional services, those are our legal services, our auditing, um, our fiscal audit that we have in June, and our legal services that we have with Drummond and Woodson. Um, repairs and maintenance, that has gone down <coughs> by 5,300, and what that is is previously the old system, the software, um, was in this budget. The new software, we did move it into IT because that's really where it belongs. And, um, so that amount has moved to Article 6, which you've already seen. Um, but that explains that decrease in, in that particular line item. Pretty much everything else, um, the dues went up because we picked up the and one more, the superintendent association, so those were those particular um, dues and fees. And the superintendent's salary, um, it looks like there's a big change, but technically, I, I, I believe, I can see what's here that's for last year, but the superintendent actually got paid $48,000, the previous one, um, and I, not sure where the balance of the money was paid from, but it came from a different account. And we do save some money on the superintendent's insurance because we pay for his. He's not part of our um, Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, and there's a savings there. And the benefits, they're all broken down by the percentages like you asked. Um, Pretty much, is there any particular questions that go with this budget? Yeah. The training, who is that for? That would be for me. That was for me to go to um, grant writing. Okay. okay. At the University of Southern Maine. That's what I was looking for. We just started. Oh, that's good. Have you paid for yourself? Sorry about that. We're going over on. Sorry. Seven. Oh, excuse me, like a thousand dollars in grants to pay? I'm just kidding. I was just thinking. Oh, no. The, the whole intent is to take the class to be able to, to really offset that and then yeah. some. So. <laughs> We're just completing that one. Thank you. What do you have? I have this back. You have seven. Oh, that's, that's the previous year. In case you wanted to look back. In that's case you wanted to look back. That's what I'm going okay. to Awesome. And we're on seven. Have the same stuff again. Mm -hmm. have the same. I will mention in this little lull that all four of the articles that we're talking about tonight are continuing a trend of the ones you saw before that they're less than the prior year's budget. That's the same we got that back. I think he's got it in you. Oh, this is something we can put This is last okay. year's. Oh, okay. Just in case, like if you went to Article 7 now, they're all here separate. If you wanted to compare. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I misspoke a little. I forgot the transportation is up a percent and a half. 
Yeah. Sorry about that. As per contract. As per contract, right. Does anyone have any questions about Article 7? Um, just the, uh, I think the three lines related to superintendent. We've got two fairly significant increases and one pretty significant decrease. Just looking for some background. Okay. Like I said, the superintendent's salary last year was really 48000 and not 42790 In fact, I think it was 48500 that you paid Betsy. But I am not sure where the balance of her pay came from. Okay. Okay. Um, again, the superintendent's benefits, it does have main state retirement. And I don't, I think last year it was not, I, like I said in the previous articles, that was not calculated. And as I said previously, the superintendent's insurance, last year that person was under our Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. This year, the current superintendent has his own personal policy, which is a lot less expensive, and we ought to pay that instead of the Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. To be specific, since it is me, um, <laughs> I, I have my State of New York teacher retirement and State of New York um, Empire Blue Cross Blue Shield, and I pay 20% of the fee. The fee is 18500 roughly for uh, a family. I pay 20% of that. And so what happens is the school district reimburses me the 20% of what I pay in my medical plan to New York. And that will last, I mean, it lasts only as long as I'm here. I will still have my New York health insurance for as long as I live, hopefully another 35 years. <laughs> and uh, so it was an agreement that the board made with me to, uh, it was effective for both of us. It saved the district quite a bit of money and it helped me uh, with a cost that I would have while I was a superintendent. And, and we've done that with previous superintendents as well. Um, since Brian left, when when Bump Paddy was here, we paid him so much a month to reimburse him for what he was paying for insurance because he already had a health insurance plan. I believe what we used to pay Bump was like $600 a month, correct? Mm -hmm. And then when Betsy came uh, to replace him, she actually was not on Anthem Blue Cross. She was given, a, a, she was supposed to have been paid a monthly amount also to cover what her insurance costs were to her. Okay. And um, so when Ken came on board, we were prepared actually to pay more because we've been paying more for that, but his was a lot cheaper. So. We've got a deal on that. Thank you. Okay. So, do we want to go on to Article 8? Yep, let's move on to Article 8. There are no more questions on Article, uh, no, Article no. 9. 9, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, this one's pretty straightforward. This is our second year of a three year contract basically went up 3%. 1.5% uh, on the base number 256,640 becomes 260,490. There are some other trip costs that are in other articles. Mm -hmm. They're s relatively small, but field trips and um, sports buses, things like that. Uh, hmm. I noticed that we have more school buses than we've had in the past. We have spares. We have spares. Spares. Oh, so they're not always something. No. We're not making trips with all of them. Four runs, and often two spares. Okay. okay. So it's a redundancy for ease of us operating a sort of a, an unmanaged lot. In other words, if we, um, if, if we were closer to the facility down in the central part of Sanford, you wouldn't see those two buses. But we don't want to be delayed in any way by a malfunction so that those two, one or two, depending on what they have there, are there and as reliable reserve. Well, I'm happy to hear that because we often laugh how Victor used to call them all. Do them all in one bus. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who aren't familiar with it, the 
bus company also pays us a monthly rent for that space out there for parking the buses. That's a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Question. Um, last year, or actually this current year, for the current budget, uh, originally was budgeted something along the lines of $20,000 for a late bus. Um, and that was going to be based on quarter to quarter, you know, try to figure out if it was being used and, and cancel it or not cancel it. Uh, my understanding is that um, as of late fall, um, that, at least, for, at least for that quarter, which I guess is the current one, um, was no longer going to be running. And my understanding as well is that when, if in fact we opted not to do it for a given quarter, we would not be billed for that service for that quarter. Um, how does that tie into X percent across the top of the budget that we have for this current year? Okay. We were billed only for that moment in time that they were operating that. And it was terribly underutilized, and so that's why we didn't continue it. But Kim and I did not find in the budget last year that they, even though there was some discussion about placing money in there, we did not find that any money was placed in the budget for that service. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll look at my paperwork. Mm -hmm. I don't have it, the, the detailed stuff at the moment, but I'm pretty sure it was added uh, later in the process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I definitely question throwing X percent at the full amount of this period because I don't think we're using that entire budget. This is, yeah. this, is, this, is the, this is the basic contract that we're looking at here. This is the basic yeah. contract mm -hmm. that we have that we, we, this, we're completing the, this is, a, we're in the first year of it, we signed the contract last year, and this is for the, <coughs> for the bus runs themselves. What was, um, what was included, correct me if I'm wrong, board members, but the, uh, the late bus was something that was added on as an additional thing to our basic contract. So this is the basic contract. Which, yes. Which we will be held to, and the percentage increased so much each year. Where would that money have come from if it was not, in fact, in Article Six for the budget? Because you know it had been agreed at the time that that money would be budgeted for that late bus, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure during the discussion that it was added to the number that we talked about last year, and it ended up in Article Six. And you know, obviously, I can look at my paperwork, well, and we can actually discuss from a position of knowledge as opposed to conjecture. In all honesty, I, I thought it was added sure in, in some place too, but I, it's not. Yeah, we'll have to look at how we recorded no, that cost. We may have recorded it in one of the other articles, mm -hmm. like we would for field trips and... Uh, yeah, it was not added to the <coughs> examples, to my knowledge. So, anyway, something to discuss <coughs> next time around. I'll, okay. I'll yeah, I, I can show work. him my paperwork from last year. I'll show you that. Okay. should be separate. But it should not be included in this particular. No, not in that contract. In this one, because this is the right. contract, right. and that was was something that was contracted. Additionally, if we but to was, see if it was, was not be last year's budget the first or this current year. This is the, that was the first year of this multi-year contract, right? Correct. Right. But it was separate. It was but a separate was, cost. Okay. This was this was signed. The, the, the contract for busing students was signed way before we discussed anything about an, an additional late bus. Okay, so I, I just want to just to stay on the table and we'll yep. hash it out. But right now, it's a question. I think we addressed I that. We addressed that, that, that at the request of some kids that came forward. A separate and, line item. Yeah, yep. it was a separate item. It's it's actually in Article Two. Really. There is a transportation line in Article Two. As, as in last year, you mean? Um, yeah, and even this current year. Um, yeah, there's several. Uh, there's a special ed bus yeah, there's line. Yeah, one for G. There's an athletics yeah. bus line. But there yeah. is no late bus no, line. It been, no, we, ahead, like, um, in Gifted and Talented, there's 3980 for transportation, which I know a lot of it covers uh, the certain kids going to math right now to the high school. Um, right, but that, that was a um, separate <coughs> point to the late bus that was for the sports kids. No, I'll find it. I wish I had that paperwork. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll just I can pick sure it can. No, no point in, in mm -hmm. flapping our gums at this point because I don't right. really have all my information. But I'll see what I can dig up in, in terms of Jeff, what happens. Jeff, that was a different cash. line item. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kim, so um, I heard yesterday <coughs> that Sanford signed with a new bus company and no longer. Did you hear about this? It, 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 I heard they might. They no, I did. Heard they did. They I was aware that it was going to be brought up at a board meeting, but I haven't. I asked the board president, board president. I asked uh, the superintendent Dave to call me as soon as it was official news. I think he had given me unofficial news more than a month ago. So really? I, th I think it, I think it's official. I think they signed with another bus company. Mm -hmm. I'm well aware of I'm just wondering how the, what the ripple effect or, or if any how that would affect us. They um, did sign with a they're going away from first student. I have already done some strategy uh, yeah. regarding that. Um, and as soon as it is public information, I'm going to reach out to that bus company because it may not be profitable for first student who will no longer have any other customer but us maintain this facility <coughs> now I'm speaking in public yes but um, we have to protect ourselves mm -hmm. if there is a situation where this is a contract. the contract is broken right and uh, we have to know that there are willing parties that would be able to serve us right I guess that's so what for me as soon as I heard that uh, well I've been I've actually been in communication with uh, the Sanford business officials and the uh, and the superintendent about this for four months at least. Mm -hmm. So so it's the, the only news I wasn't going to discuss it in public until there was public information in Sanford. Mm -hmm. yeah, I just wonder if you heard anything. I heard that they I heard that they signed a contract this week mm -hmm. to get away from but it's official. Right. And again. Okay. I'll do my I'll do my checking <coughs> Any other questions about Students' transportation in the Article 9. <coughs> okay, then let's move on to uh, Article 10. Okay. Article 10 is our operation maintenance, so that's everything as far as keeping our facility up and running, um, not only during the school day, but basically till 11 o'clock every night. <laughs> and it's not just inside, it's also the outside. Um, on the fields and everything else. And within this article, um, one item that we did not budget for this year was equipment fixed assets because we really didn't have any fixed assets to order this year. Last year we had tables and things like that, but you know, right now we had no requests. Um, the salaries are by contract and they're basically um, the facility manager and three custodians. They are year-round and full-time. Um, basically, the next lines are pretty, you know, they're substitutes, overtime. The stipend is for um, using the facility director's vehicle. Um, employee <coughs> benefits, again, they're all broken down below. Um, this particular article is a little bit higher than most others. Um, this one and nutrition because workman's comp is a lot more money for those two type of departments versus teachers and administration. And everything else is pretty much very similar to last year. And, and basically it's either utilities, heat, electricity, or maintenance to the ground security. Um, and I think pretty much all the descriptions are pretty well detailed to <laughs> tell you what each line item is for. But if there's anything in particular you're, you want to ask a question <coughs> on? Has there been any conversation yet on, on uh, oil costs for next year? It's too early for that, maybe? No, but I actually, <coughs> when I looked at the heating fuel line this year, um, I decided to reduce that line by five thousand dollars based upon the fact that we buy in with Sanford we usually get a good deal um, last year I budgeted at 375 a gallon we locked in at 319 with Sanford um, 
based on our consumption and our past history of bidding with Sanford, I felt comfortable reducing that number um, by that amount. The other, the other thing is, is the way that things have gone with the oil market is, is our contract has been pushed further and further ahead every year. Um, the first couple of years that I was here, we had our oil, our oil contract signed by like February or March uh, during the school year, so it was easy to plug in a number that was already established. Now it gets pushed further and further, sometimes June or July before we get that number finalized. So we have to use our best educated guess, put a number in, and last year it worked to our advantage, but um, I'm just trying to tighten up what we're budgeting versus what we're expending. So that's why I reduced that line by that amount. Question. Question. Just out of curiosity, we have here water and sewer. Don't we have our own system? The water and sewer is for quarterly water testing, which is required by the state. Oh, I didn't read it. Um, we have a drinking water program that we, we're required to do. Um, and then also the sewer uh, portion of that is for the, for the uh, service of our septic system during the summer months. Okay. We have the tank pumped, every, pumped and serviced every year. Can I ask what contract for the facilities and the three full-time custodians as per contract? What contract? The custodians are fall under the support staff contract. So whatever the con whatever was uh, agreed upon in the contract that was just signed this past year, they would fall into that category. And can I ask what kind of training they go through at the travel conferences? Travel and conferences is actually <clears throat> that's for uh, mileage reimbursement based upon the IRS rate. Right, but for what kind of training do we do? Mm, that's not for tr training. That's for like On the trips. other page it says training for custodial and maintenance staff. That would be under staff development, which there is no funding requested. And that staff development is... Nope, on the other side under... 5,800 it says training. It says training. Yeah, that should be 26. Yeah. Mm, the mileage reimbursement is for stuff like if I do trips to like uh, roof reusables. Oh, okay. Stuff like that. Yeah. Jordan so Johnson, that, that line description, the 5800 line description, it should be mileage reimbursement. Okay. But it's for you going to training or something, right? No. It would be for anything school related that I would have to travel for. Okay. And to, to clarify that, it's really not connected to training. And I, I think maybe part of the reason that we have taken out Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the staff development part, because we do all the training in-house, and uh, Andy does most all of his training online, so that wasn't really in it, and it's it's free. So, um, like we do, like our bloodborne pathogen training with our school nurse. Uh, Dave Cody is our chemical hygiene person that that. Uh, takes care of that you know the more stuff that we can do in-house and free of charge that's just progressively been the way that we've gone and I hadn't been I hadn't been expending funds f for staff development for a, a couple of years now so I've taken that request out <clears throat> and we partner with Maine Municipal Management and Maine School Management and both of them offer excellent programs uh, online and we had uh, two of our employees do online one today. <laughs> I guess the because um, in case we end up using this in a in a booklet, um, if you go to the description on twenty three eight zero on the sub account says employee retirement, but on <coughs> the on the description it says repairs of a technical nature. Oops. I just want to make sure that's mm, okay put in the right place. 
and on the and on that uh, second page, actually, you, you should just cross out training for custodial and maintenance staff. Yeah, I and, did. I, I've and already put, done um, yeah, put mileage reimbursement. reimbursement. Travel right. reimbursement. Right. Twenty-three eighty is really three thousand. Sorry. The retirement part. Mm. The description no, should be, be down one line, you're saying? Right. Yeah. Yeah, 3,000 is building tech service, which is the description repairs of tech If an damage. electrician comes in mm -hmm. or a plumber. Right. Mm -hmm. That one's there. Looks like they got moved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what it is is I tried not to include, like, employ me in retirement in the descriptions down below because I knew that that was one that I was going to take out totally in the final one anyway mm -hmm. and I just picked up the wrong number when I, mm -hmm. I So it's the descriptions though but not, not the chart of accounts that needs to be correct? Right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other questions about uh, Article 10, Operations and Maintenance? Yeah, just for clarification, Julie. Just right now. <coughs> Under the state, and then so that that's for mileage using the truck, right? No, that's for truck use. For truck use. That's for truck use. Mm -hmm. uses, you know what you use it for. A lot of it is. Well, for instead of bu us buying a vehicle basically and then having to pay insurance pay, pay for a vehicle or you know, a loan mm -hmm. and insurance so we use his so he uses his truck to plow plow I think plow I take uh, the recyclable recyclables up to the transfer <coughs> station stuff. stuff of that nature okay yeah. I just want yeah. and you use your truck if you go to roots yes Usable. yeah mm -hmm. Yep. Like a John Deere. It's a little bit quicker than that. <laughs> <laughs> Runs like a No, I'm talking about going up to the John Deere facility up in, in Chapel. Or in, excuse me, in the San Springfield. Sanford. Yep. Can I ask a non-budget question? The young man at the transfer station Monday was, I don't want to say dumpster diving, but he was into the cardboard bin, pulling off all the little school tabs and thing uh box tops for box education tops, yes what do you do with those just out of curiosity what do you get mm -hmm. or anything yeah the pteg <laughs> has that as a project you get 10 cents per school gets 10 cents per box top so i think last year we had a check for 800 and something dollars i want you to know how hard he works <laughs> 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 Do we do Campbell's labels too? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. he was cutting labels. Oh, yeah. He was cutting labels, cutting yeah. labels. Right, right at the front door when you come in on the left there. Box. There's a place to put them. Oh, we used to, I don't know. It's still there. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, then let's move on to Article 12, Nutrition. Article 12, um, there is a, a big decrease, and it's mainly because um, a lot of, after I, I completed the salary section and the professional service section, I looked at the rest of them and I compared to the last couple of years, and I could see that it was just over budgeted, over budgeted, over budgeted. So I kind of went back and said, this is really where we are, and I just changed and, and put in a budget of what I thought was really going to be spent this year and not just adding a percentage on top of whatever was there last year. Um, <coughs> basically, the salaries consist of two um, cafeteria people that are here school year, um, substitutes in case they're out. Their benefits, again, their benefits are higher, keeping in mind um, their workman's comp is, is higher than the rest of the school. And their group insurance is what it is, less their pay, what they what they pay into it. 
Um, the purchase professional services, that is our contract with Sanford um, for the manager of the food department. We share um, the same person with Sanford School. And what that does is it just makes it a set rate. She's just <coughs> basically on a contract. Um, and and, and again, all the way down through from repairs and maintenance down to the dues, I basically went by looking at the last two years of what was actually spent and looking at what this year was and putting it kind of more to where it should be. One thing that Kim and I were talking about today is that the uh, if, if you just automatically put 3% on the food, when you have a decline in your enrollment, you haven't really budgeted very well. And we certainly have a decline in enrollment. <coughs> so even if there's a two to three percent increase in the food cost, but we're serving less meals because our enrollment is, is down, then it's realistic to look at what the true food cost is, and that's why she's got forty four thousand in there instead of the fifty seven. Is there anything anything else driving that? That's a that's a huge disparity, thirteen thousand. Uh, what she was saying was that over the past three years, well, she was noticing what was happening that person assisting with the budget is is the contract person yeah. that we use and she was adding three percent to all line items. Wow. So if you look at the, the fiscal year that I gave you of the previous yeah. year you'll see that there's mm -hmm. almost twenty thousand dollars left over. Yeah. And it's just budgeting. Wow. Nineteen thousand. Pays to have a different set of eyes look at these things. Yeah. And for those of you who are new to the process. Um, we used to have our own food manager who was um, under the contract along with the uh, with other staff members. And uh, when we switched to getting uh, food manager services from Sanford, uh, it was a savings of over $30,000 first year. So this has been something that's really paid off for us. Do you serve breakfast here? Do you serve summer meals? Yes. Well, well, summer school is in session. Okay, but you don't just carry over through the summer? No. Sadly, those have not been very well utilized, even though um, a couple years ago I put posters up everywhere. You can bring your kids, anybody up to 18, can come and have a free breakfast or have a free lunch, and we put out flyers, but it's been very sparsely used, I think, maybe not as well as in town because it's transportation or something. I'm not just sure what, but um, <coughs> so I thought it was one of the greatest things when we were giving kids free breakfasts and free lunches, but um, we didn't have very many kids taking part in it. I think the kids that take part in it are the kids that are in the extended school year program, mostly for special ed. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on nutrition? Mm -hmm. Pretty notable savings, certainly. Jeez. Mm -hmm. And this is a pattern of um, what you're seeing of us analyzing every item. Remember in my preamble that I wrote to you about my primer on budgeting that I put in the pause, too? Um, budgeting is part art, part science. The predictability part is the art. The science is the understanding of the history and the bringing the history to the current. And um, with Kim's help, all these budgets have come through much more realistically and much more exactly. And if you notice, they're not really much different than what uh, the administrators and Kim and I gave at the 28th of January when we had our initial draft budget presentation. But the good part of this program is that we're not perfect either. They, each week we may find something or see something as we prepare these numbers, like the workman's comp. We had to look at it a little closer. You don't stop to think that because of the risk pool for custodians and kitchen workers, you pay almost 10 times as much for their comp costs to the insurance company as you would a teacher or administrator. And that's because of that risk pool that they're in is um, 
because of the type of work, more likely to have an accident or injury or whatever. So, but as you go through these things each week, you fine tune and uh, we're very similar to what we said that day on the 28th, but there are so far a few savings that we've seen. Uh, we won't really comment on it until the end. If we come out a little bit less or a little bit more by the last meeting we have on the 17th when we as a board uh, consolidate what we think our budget should be before we work with the finance, budget and finance again on the uh, 25th, um, I think you'll find that it's still relatively close to what we started with, but the little nuances and the changes have just made it that much more accurate. I'll say, um, even from last time, I, the, the, the narrative is extremely helpful. So Thank you. Nice job on that. I appreciate it very much. Any other questions at all about any of the articles we've taken up tonight? I have sort of a related question. Um, any expectation of when the main.gov website is going to have the numbers for the, for the current year or for the, the ones we need for this budget? Because as of last week, not so much. No. Yeah, I got a, a report from Dave, uh, the superintendent at Sanford, that said that uh, their software program that helps put that together is on the fritz or whatever, and, and they hope to have it back and operating shortly. But uh, that didn't sound too good to me as to yeah, when we would have some accurate down. information. So could that conceivably impact our budgeting schedule? Mm -hmm. In in the huge efficiency that we expect the state to operate at. <laughs> we're, we're budgeting our expenditures. The final tax rate is going to be based on the revenues. Yeah, but it affects yeah. like the last three articles on the warrant. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, kind of my point. That's true. Mm -hmm. And if like nine and higher, this yeah. could be 13, 13, 13, right. 13, 14. Yes, It's absolutely. affected by all those lovely state numbers. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, they'll have to have them ready in time for people to Budgets. We're not the only one in that situation. We're not the only town that will be looking for right. those. Yeah. Sanford's certainly looking for it. <laughs> well, the budget schedules are different. You know, some of them are in June, which obviously they have a lot more time to. And some are in March. To wait. Yeah. Some town meetings are in March. I think SAD 57. I think yeah. they have all their town meetings in March. Yeah. Well, Interesting yeah. then. There's another question? Did you? you did well, it's kind of not budget, so I'll ask somebody after. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, we're safe. Yeah. Good. You have more, you'll have so more opinions. Yeah. Not to show my age or anything, but how much is lunch now for a kid? Two something. Uh, two something. Two fifty. Two fifty. Two seventy five. Can you tell me? Can teachers? I think it's two twenty five. Two twenty five. I know it. I know it went up it's on a the little bit. Wall, we that's were forced to. Taking off my classroom too. Do you have free lunch to a to any of the kids? Oh yes, yes. we have a 50 about a 53 percent free and reduced profile. Right. And there's yeah. more than half of our students either get reduced price lunch or a free lunch. Right. And <coughs> what uh, was mentioned about raising the price was not because we were trying to make money on the thing, but the federal <laughs> government, in their ultimate wisdom, about a year and a half ago, decreed that. <coughs> they wanted each year or each couple of years you to raise the price enough so that the price that they were paying as students matched the price that the federal government was giving back as the refund to the school district. So, and the, it's about 270. So, we're not excited about raising our price to 270, and and the, we were given something like five or six years to do that, to, I guess? To, to make as long as you're making small increment changes. Yeah, it's it's, two, it's two, two, fifty in two fifty in breakfast and a dollar. dollar. Two fifty. <coughs> two fifty and a dollar for breakfast. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, we aren't talking about raising it this fall because I think going to the two fifty was close enough to the two seventy, so we've, we've made that kind of progress. And yeah, we just did that uh, mm -hmm. not, not too long ago. Yeah, three, three kids, kids that's a lot out of your budget. Yeah. 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 So you're going to look at 53 percent of the students here free uh, reduced lunch. That's a lot. Are we still having to sell snack food to budget to Allen's? No. Yeah. I don't Do think we still sell. sell? No. Do we no. still sell snack food? I don't think you're allowed. They don't have snack foods for sale in the cafe, do they? 
they no, don't have room for sale. What the what the parent teacher group does is they have a snack shack where they provide snacks for kids who don't have a snack with them and get things for the kids out of out of our teachers' room. They have a supply there. Broccoli and, and green beans, applesauce and things like that, and we can just keep those in Brussels our room Brussels. so that I like kids with snacks I like can access that. So at lunchtime, you can also go in there and buy one of those Cheerio. Ice cream. It's milk and it's. Lunch. Yeah, that stuff yeah, is that's gone. Oh, thank God. Yeah, it's <laughs> broccoli or Brussels sprouts now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> used to have some. Used to have some occasional. You know those squares. Food. Judy. Yeah. yeah. Used to have some occasional uh, food sales, mm -hmm. bake sales that kids might have for. Do they s still do that for fundraisers or something? Oh, um, not. I know gifted and lunch. talented use of. No, not during yeah. lunch, but mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> And it's actually discouraged because of the new nutrition. Yeah. Um, exactly. You're not supposed to have bake sales. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're selling carrot sticks. So yeah. <laughs> so I'll bring in cupcakes tomorrow. <laughs> cool. yeah. right. And I'll entertain, if we don't have any more questions or discussions, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. No, we need an executive session, as was stated right. by the superintendent. Okay. So, so I'll, I'll motion to go into executive session. Okay. I'll second. At whatever I'll time. Move cool. by Mary, Thank you, everybody. Oh, this For is personnel issues. Thank, thank you.